everybody, and welcome to the FBL Solidity Team Call. My name is Marisa Maggio, and I'm super excited to be on with you guys today. Um, we have a very special guest. We have Mr. Gary Alberg on with us today. Now, just to kind of brag on Gary a little bit before he jumps in, Gary is a three-time back-to-back Hall of Fame producer. He's also somebody who, every time I see him, one thing, Gary, I truly, truly respect about your character is like you're just un, like unapologetically yourself. And that's in like the best way ever. Meaning like no matter where I see you, like, like I just walk up to you, we just have a conversation and it's just neutral and it's always typically geared towards something positive. So Gary, I appreciate you for that and just for many other things over the last few years of getting to know each other and working you know, alongside one another. Um, but without further ado, Gary, first and foremost, I do appreciate you taking the time to be on with us today. I know you mentioned you were in the middle of an app, so I very much appreciate you taking that pause, taking that beat. But how's your day going today, Gary? Good, good. I appreciate you guys having me. Thanks for having me. I love learning from you guys. I feel like I learn every day, like being involved in your guys' groups and everybody else. And, and you, I think it's just a positive energy. I love it. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. And just to kind of hit the call off, tell us a little bit, um, you know, about yourself, what you were doing before Family First Life and what got you started with Family First Life? Yeah. So I was in the motorcycle industry, uh, working at a dealership. I worked my way from the bottom. So I was sweeping the floors when I was 15 years old because I wasn't legal to work. And then uh, actually sweeping an RC track. And then I went from, you know, sweeping the floors there. And then I got involved in the motorcycle service, like working on the bikes. And then I worked in parts department, kind of cl closed, like kind of kept climbing the ladder. Then eventually sales, ran the store, um, the dealership. And then uh, just kind of got sick of the hours. So I got fired for going to a funeral, right, which I thought was crazy, which was uh, one of my dad's it was pretty much like my dad. It was my best friend's father of 20 known him for 25 years. And he had passed away and I worked six days a week, you know, 60, 70 hours a week. And I took one Saturday off. It was like mandatory to work Saturdays. And I took a Saturday off. I said, Hey, I'm going to this funeral. I never asked for time off. I never call out sick. You know, I was going, going to this funeral. I'm taking the day off. He's like, Oh, well, you got to show up. And I was like, well, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be here. Right. And I was like, I just, and I work my tail off for you. I'm not going to let you tell me what I can and can't do, especially to a funeral. So uh, that was kind of like my, my tipping point of like, I got to get out of here. I got to figure something else out, you know? So found, uh, worked with Eric Anthony at the dealership and then kind of, uh, I, I went and saw him down in Florida. It was all unexpected. Saw my in-laws down there near like West Palm beach and then ran into Eric Anthony. He's like, oh, stop over. Come by my house. I stopped over his house. I'm like, holy crap, doing well. Good job. Good for you. And I was like, all right, I got to get out of my career. I'm going to work with you. So ended up getting my license, got my license, didn't sell a policy, put my two weeks in. I was just off and running. So I love that. That's and out of a, it just shows like sometimes, you know, in a tough situation that we have to get through, it opens up yeah. a new avenue or a new door for us. So um, I definitely am with you on the, you know, if I was in your shoes at that funeral, I would have been out of there too, just because like you said, you worked really hard for them and you showed up, mm -hmm. you were always there and you simply needed to be somewhere else that one Saturday. And it's just mm -hmm. funny how time plays out. You know, you bump into Eric and then Eric's like, hey, you know, this opportunity. And you're like, I'm in. So yep. it was kind of game over from there. Yeah. And, and it changed my life. Like this industry has literally changed my life. It's probably been the best thing in the last three years. I love it. Like I wouldn't, you know, I don't see myself doing anything else. So. And when you say that, Gary, like it seems like genuine and sincere. Like you actually love, oh, like, like, like you really feel like you, and like, if you don't mind, like dive in a little bit on that. Like what makes you like, what fills your cup like within the industry or how does that kind of work co coincide with you and your personality? So I, it's changed. Like I think the why in this business, it probably changes for a lot of people. Obviously we're all trying to survive at the beginning, right? We're all trying to make money. Um, we got bills to pay. I had a house in that I bought, you know, that was kind of like, I was making de decent de decent money at the dealership, but I wasn't like out of that, that 
paycheck. I was still working paycheck to paycheck, you know? So when I got into this, I was like, my first thing was, Hey, I got to survive. I got to pay my bills. You know, I was telling someone this, um, earlier, I was like, it took me two months, two and a half months to really figure this out. And I was like, I knew I was going to figure it out. And I just had to put the effort in and get past that hump to get there and pay my bills. But I think once I started making in the money, I started paying my bills. And then eventually it started transitioning where like, I really loved helping people. I loved, you know, helping people with life insurance. Once you have those first couple death claims too, I think it makes a big impact on it. And, you know, it's, it's crazy when you put in the work and you actually like love what you do, love helping people with the coverage, people that want it, it, it like the money just comes in after. Right. So it's like at the end of the day, if you're just working, you actually genuinely care, you know, it, the money, the, the money's going to come, you know, and then I think now in an aspect of what we do, we've been doing it for three years, like you, Romney, Rami, and all you guys, you know, you crush it, Afro. Um, I think it's pretty cool because now it's like now we're at the transition where, you know, we, we can pay our bills. We're, we're doing decent at it. We, we know how to do it well. Now it's like, how do we get other people to do it? Right. Absolutely. So in, I, I love, I just want to pause you there because I love how you mentioned like in the beginning, like you, you did struggle, like your first couple of months, you didn't know yeah. what you were doing. You're in a brand new industry. Like, why would you, right? Like it didn't take you, you or me, you know, 30 seconds to learn how to like, you know, ride our bike or to, to learn how to do whatever it is. It's like, we had to get those reps in whatever it was, even to walk guys, every single person on this call that ever took a step, like you put a lot of effort in as a child to be able to walk. It's mm -hmm. the same thing in this business. It's like, you got to crawl before you walk. And that's kind of what I hear you saying is like, it goes from you're in survival mode. You got to pay the bills mm -hmm. to, okay, wait, I really like actually like helping people. Yeah. So now by a byproduct, I'm going to have a great income coming in. Um, and then, like you said, death claims, like that opens your eyes up real wide if anything ever will. Um, I know yeah. for me, it did the same Gary and it just, it shines through on you that like you're, you genuinely like are happy. Do I think that you don't have a bad day? Sure. I'm, I mean, you're human, mm -hmm. of course, you do. but it genuinely shines through that. Like you truly love what you're doing and you love helping people. Now, with that being said, kind of prior to coming into the insurance industry, I know I had habits, for example, that I had a kick and I think that everybody has habits throughout their life that they either need to remove or that they need to add in, so to say. Talk to mm -hmm. us a little bit about, you know, what your non-negotiables looked like prior to being in the insurance industry and then what they look like now being a three-time back-to-back Hall of Fame producer um, and why those non-negotiables changed. Mm -hmm. So a lot, like from the beginning, it was always, it, it's different now because we were doing a lot more in home and kind of transitioned to virtual but like i love still doing in home and everything else i do more virtual now just because it's more efficient but um you know dial days were monday thursday i would get to the office 7 seven thirty, right earlier no later make sure i'm ready for dial days dial all day monday thursday and then uh run in the field tuesday wednesday friday saturday right so for myself, I always felt guilty if I wasn't doing anything that was like work related or helping people, right? Like helping them with life insurance. If I wasn't doing that, those things, and I didn't have a good, if I didn't get there, like Monday and Thursdays were mandatory, right? And even, even to this day, I show up, I, I, I love an office setting because I have a five month at home. So I can't get anything done. I got two dogs, the whole kit and caboodle. So Pretty much now, now what it looks like now is that I go to the office every day, right? I get here. I try to get here before eh, eight, not eight, eight 30, but I'm here every single day, right? No excuses. Um, start dialing, picking up the phone, take a quick lunch break, but I'm in the office every single day, right? There's no excuse for me not to be here. No matter what the situation is financially, I just set that ground for myself that I must be here. I got to dial right? Help people that need help. And you kind of like, you set the bar for yourself, right? So I know the hall of fame stuff. It's like, that's like a mandatory thing. I have to do that. Right. That's just like, that's my standard is I have to hit hall of fame. I have to get those numbers. That's just what I have to do year in, year out. It's, 
it as you get as you keep doing it, it gets a little easier so it's like that's the bar right like if i don't hit it i'm kind of cheating myself that's what i feel like you know so that's kind of like my mandatory stuff so it's just kind of sticking with that i treat it like a job absolutely and i think that like with that right like i asked like what did you change like i asked you this intricate question right and what yeah. i love gary about the answer was like you basically said to me like hey like when i was in the field i showed up when mm -hmm. i'm doing telesales i show up and i'm yep. in an office setting guys i literally live by myself like like i'm talking when i first came in f i lived by myself okay like in my own apartment and i used to go to an office that was an hour and a half away from me that I actually moved to be closer to the office in Connecticut. And I, I went to the office because it actually helped me focus. Not because I could, I could dial from home, right? Like I didn't have a five month old and two dogs at home. It was just me. But at the same time, guys, I had laundry at my house. I had clothes that could be folded. I had dishes I could clean. I had a kitchen I could clean. I had the whole house I could clean, right? So environment, yes, environment is truly everything. And Gary, it sounds like what you do is you just show up, you do what you say you're going to do and you get to work. And like, mm -hmm. that, that that's what you do. And that's why you get results, which I love because you don't overcomplicate, right? Yes, exactly. Um, which is which is key, which is key. Now talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, setting the stage with clients. So as you mentioned, you were predominantly in home, just like, you know, myself and many others. And now you transition to predominantly telesales. Yeah. Um, so talk to us a little bit about setting the stage. Does that differ from when you were in the home to on the phone? If so, how? Yep. So setting the stage in home, I feel like they see who I am. They see I'm a normal person. I'm not just some, you know, someone trying to be in there and sell them or whatever, try to solve their problem, right? I think on the phone, obviously, I got to be a little more kind of explain to them what I do. You got to get a little more trust out of them on the phone versus in home just because they're not sitting there looking at you. Right. So they're trying to look, look at what I'm, what I do. I try to be thorough of, of, you know, what we're trying to execute. Why did they fill it out? Really get that detail and kind of figure out the why. And then throughout the presentation, you're kind of always bringing up the why. And I always like to use names instead of like spouse. So like, for example, I'd be like, you know, what, what we're trying to do here today, Joseph, it was trying to make sure, you know, you had no coverage in place. You want to put something either to cover the mortgage or the funeral expenses or both, if you can afford it. And I say, you know, typically I'm opposite of a sales guy because a lot of sales guys are trying to upsell you. And then the price just keeps going up because my wife just bought a car. I'm here. I'm going to do the opposite. Right. So it's got to be affordable and comfortable for you because six months, eight months, 10 months down the road, you end up canceling it. I didn't do my job correctly, right? So we're going to try to find something that fits your budget to either cover one of those two, both of them, you know, or whatever is going to make sense, right? Something's better than nothing. So at the end of the day, I'm always trying to get help them with something. And then they feel a little more comfortable, I think, with that too, because I'm actually down selling them, not up selling them like you would if you were to go buy a car, right? Absolutely. I love that. And I think that that's huge because because it sounds like you're literally focusing on, hey, this person has a problem, so to say, and this yeah. is going to be the solution. But it doesn't sound like you're pitching a full payoff and 40,000 Americo Eagle to somebody yeah. who's making $2,500 a month, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, that doesn't make sense, right? So yeah, you get yourself off of this, off of the guard of this is the sales guy calling me for the insurance to I'm actually just the guy who's going to make sure it fits the budget make sure it feels good and make sure mm -hmm. that nine months down the road, you still have this coverage in place because when you need it most, it needs to be there. Right. I love, Correct. I love how you said that. Like the, you know, I didn't do my job. Right. And guys, yeah. like to be quite honest, like Gary, that's true. Right. Like if someone mm -hmm. cancels on you, like, and you knew they couldn't afford it, like that, that's my fault. Like that's your fault. Right. So like, mm -hmm. don't oversell people guys, meet people where they're at and help and work around their budget. So yep. you're kind of setting the stage, explaining, you know, your role, who you are, and really kind of what you're going to walk through with them. Yeah, I always had that thing, too. I'm like, you know, if they had the coverage and they end up canceling it in a year or a year and a half, it's like you don't know what their medication, what their criteria is, right? We could have lowered the coverage. We don't know what changed 
it could put him in a worse position. You know, I, I just always have that, like, I always try to do right by everybody. You know what I mean? So that's generally at the end of the day. You just want to help them. That's it. Absolutely. So find the problem, solve it. And don't look, don't look at it like, like a sale guys. Look at it. Like we need to find the problem. We need to solve it on Correct. an efficient budget for this person. So love that Gary. Um, and then as it pertains to, you know, your mindset, your mindset seems like you have a really strong mindset. You know who you are, you know what you stand for, you know what you're going to do, you know what you're not going to do. You're not, you don't seem confused, like just generally speaking. Mm -hmm. um, where does that come from? Like, does that come from daily disciplines? Does that come from the way you were raised? Does that come from your routines? You know, like, where do you think that that mentality really shines through and comes from? Because I think a lot of people struggle with just being who they are in this business. Yeah, I think a lot of it, too, is like our business isn't cold calling, right? Mo like a lot of it. We're not just going through. I always tell people, and they're like, oh, I didn't fill it out. And I was like, well, you know, I didn't open up a phone book, pick your name and call you for no reason, right? You filled out this request. So my always like mentality of it was either they were going to sell me on how they wanted to get out of talking about it, or I was going to help them and get them life insurance, right? At least get to the point of like, these people fill out a request. They filled it out. There was nothing they were going to say that was going to trick me into thinking that they didn't do it, right? So I don't know. It's just my mentality of it, right? You get enough rejections and you're like, I'm not going to be told, hey, that you didn't fill this out. So I don't know. I think it's just a re repetition that con consistently doing it. It just over time, you just like, man, I'm just going to help these people. These people, like, there's nothing in my mind. They're always like, oh, I didn't fill it out. I go, perfect. Well, you put your date of birth here as 10 24 you know 75 so there were and they're like yeah that's right and i'm like yep you, you all are perfect you already put your email as blah 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 right there was nothing in my mind that they were going to try to sell me that they didn't do it and it's crazy because a lot of those people too over time once you once they're like they want to get a reaction out of me and i'm just like yep perfect and just to clarify here you put this and then they're like this guy ain't reacting. Like he's just going through. He's like, Oh yeah, I did fill this out. Yeah, I did. You know, I, I was actually looking for coverage. They kind of come forward with it. I think they're just so scared or, or whatever their case may be that they're just like, I don't, you know, feel comfortable talking about it or what it may be. You know what I mean? So. Right. Or like, is this right? I filled out 18 requests and we know that that does happen. But what I love what you just yeah. said, Gary is, you said there was no doubt in my mind that whatever lead I'm calling, like they filled mm -hmm. the lead out. Like I, you don't care what it is. They might've filled it out 10 years ago. You don't care. Like they they yep. filled it out and you're going to bring them back to whatever information you have as it pertains to that. But however, what else you're saying, Gary, is if you react like, and I'm like, no, Gary, I didn't fill that out. And you're like, well, um, it was the one that, you know, it was about the uh, state regulated, you know, final expense programs. If, if you were to pass away, for your, it's like, like, I'm hanging up. Like, you're like, like, I'm yeah. like, like, that's confusing. Why do you sound confused? And you're the one that's supposed to help me. Right. So guys, yeah. you want to remember that, like, we got to speak with that confidence and conviction. Because at the end of the day, like, I know, like, for my own self, like I wouldn't want myself or anyone in my family to have a life insurance agent that's not going to stand up for them, like stand up for them. And you mm -hmm. right off the rip, Gary, are showing basically like, um, I'm standing up for myself right now. You know, you filled this thing out. We're going to verify it. We're going to move on with our lives because like, this is what, this is what I do every day, all day long. So you just are keeping it in the power of repetition. I think there's a lot yeah. of power in that. If you can just keep going, going, going. Does everybody mm -hmm. tell you yes, Gary? No, uh, no. A lot of people tell you no. It's almost like I was telling someone earlier too. I was like, look for as many, look for a hundred no's because you're going to get that person that's going to give you a yes, right? So you, it's almost like shooting basketball. I was talking about this earlier. I was like, do you want like 10 attempts at shooting at the three-point line where you're like, oh, no one answers or do you want a hundred attempts, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're more likely to make it if you do a hundred shots, right? So just it, you want to call as many people as possible, even if they're not picking up any form of way. I always text, leave voicemails, call them three times. I'm, I'm getting a hold of them or they're calling me, you know, so that's that's that. And Gary, when you leave a voicemail, because I get this question all the time, like, do you leave like an intricate voicemail or do you just leave like a, like what is your voicemail sound like? Let's just say you're calling a 
you're working final expense and mortgage? Yeah, I do mo a lot of final expense, but yeah, some mortgage. I'll okay. just be like, I'll just say, for example, hey, this is Gary Alberg, just getting back to you about the uh, state regulated final expense. Uh, give me a shout back. We got your request. My direct line is blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Or kind of go forward like that. Or it depends on the, the sometimes I kind of change it up a little bit. I'll just be like, hey, Joe, this is Gary Alberg, just getting back to you. Uh, I got your call. Give me a call back. Uh, when you're free, you know, I kind of keep it plain, try to just get a reaction out of them. And then I can kind of go into talking about it. So. Absolutely. Cause your goal is just to get them on the phone. Yes or no. So I know, right. Like that's, that, that's the goal. Exactly. Yeah. Love it. And then, um, last couple questions for you, Gary, um, what expectations like you and your group, it seems like anybody that's really, you know, involved in your group, you guys are writing at a pretty high level, like individually, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, um, what expectations do you set for new agents? And with those expectations, you know, when do you decide um, that maybe that agent is not going to be a good fit for your group or for this business? So a lot of it too is it the it this business is a lot harder I think than a job because you it's you have no one that tells you you have to go to work every day it's all based on you right so I always tell people I'm like you gotta want it so I can't want it more than you than you want it right so at the end of the day you gotta actually want to do this find out find what why you're doing this right have the motivation to do it but a lot of times too it's more like hey. You know, if, if you can't show up on time or you continue to do this or you don't want to put in the work, or, hey, maybe maybe you are cut out for a nine to five job. Right. Like I can't be here and babysit. you. I can only do so much, you know, to this point, if you don't have a strong enough why and you can't show up, which is a lot of it. Right. If you don't show up, I can't really help you. Right. I'll do everything in my power. I want you to win. You know, I get a I get a high off of seeing people succeed because of what it's done for me, and then to see them do it and change their lives, it's huge. You know, so I think that that's the biggest thing is you know having the drive to do it, want to want to make a difference, right? Showing up, putting in the work, putting in the effort, you know, actually trying. I think that's the big part of it. So, absolutely, and I would agree with that wholeheartedly. It's like you know, if somebody has a why they're doing this, they're showing up, mm -hmm. like. Just like you said, Gary, you said your first two months, which is completely normal. They were a little rocky. Like my probably mm -hmm. first like two like years in the industry were, were a bit rocky. But it's like, guys, in the beginning, it's going to be as difficult as you decide to make it. It's like, are you going to show up consistently every day? It goes back to that power of repetition that you were talking about, Gary. Mm -hmm. And if you show up consistently for two months, for 90 days, you give this thing 90 days that you show up and you do everything that you say you're going to do. Am I going to say that there's no doubt, like, could you lose? Sure, you could lose. Anybody could lose. But do I think you're going to have? I ever saw somebody lose personally that I've seen show up for 90 days in a row? I personally haven't, not in this business. You yeah. just get so conditioned to saying the same things over and over and over. And guys, once you realize that's all we're doing is we're basically saying the same thing over and over, we're identifying the problem, and then we're going into said script, if you will, and we're just going from there. We're helping the family. If you don't have that why you want to do it, or you don't care enough about people to actually want to help them, then that's typically when you start not showing up, not doing the things that you said you were going to do, et mm -hmm. cetera, et cetera. And Gary, just like you said, um, you know, unfortunately, we can't help people or want them to win more than you know they want to win for themselves. So I mm -hmm. love that. And then just kind of to wrap up, if you don't mind, um, would do you do a lot of one call close or do you do a lot of more appointments? I'm doing actually a lot of one call closes. Some are appointments, but a lot of them I'm just calling the lead and I'm just like going over their information, kind of showing them the structure of it. And then I go roll right into it. So will you, will you role play that intro with me? Yeah, I could do that. All right, cool. Thanks. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so you want me to like call you? Yeah, you could. Yeah. Call me. I can be whatever, you know, 80, whatever you need. I'm just going to do like, for example, I'll do like veteran leads or something like that. Right. Perfect. Okay. Um, do you want me to do ring ring? Yep. Hello. Marisa? Yep. Marisa, this is Gary Alberg here. Just getting back to you um, about that request you had sent into us. 
regarding the veteran final expense benefits, just confirming here, you put your date as 1-28-1993 or 1974. Is that correct? Yes. Perfect. And thank you for your service in the army. God bless you. Thanks. And you looks like here, just confirming you put your email as, you know, Marisa Maggio at AOL.com. Is that correct? It is. Okay, perfect. Awesome. So my job's super simple, Marisa. I'm just a supervisor here to get you qualified. Just go over your eligibility for the discounted veteran final expense benefits. My job's super simple. I'm not the sales guy. Um, just to kind of best help you, Marisa, what exactly were you looking for when you had requested this information? Um, just to see if, you know, my life, if I might need some more life insurance. Okay, perfect. So you you were saying that you were looking, maybe you didn't have enough coverage. You did, did you not have any coverage? Yeah, I just think I might not have enough coverage. I have about 10,000. Okay. 10, 10, perfect. Awesome. Um, perfect. And I see you put on here married. I'm assuming your spouse to be the beneficiary. Is that correct? Yes. Perfect. And what is her name? Just so I'm not rude. Um, his name is John. Or his name, sorry. <laughs> his name. <laughs> John. Okay, perfect. Awesome. So just so I have a good understanding, Marisa, uh, you were looking into the request because you maybe didn't have enough coverage, maybe leave a little something extra if you could, if it was affordable. Um, for God forbid when that time comes, so John's not stuck with any other funeral expenses or any final expenses. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, perfect. So like I said, my job's super simple, Marisa. Um, usually only takes about five to eight minutes to get you qualified. What they do is they ask real basic medical questions, real simple stuff. Um, and then they're just going to verify who you are, make sure you are a veteran, make sure all your discounts to get, get all those discounts. They're going to verify with your social. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find an option that's comfortable and affordable in your budget, right? Because if you think you can, you can afford it, it's probably not affordable. We'll look at something a little more cheaper and then we'll submit the application. If you do get approved, congratulations. You'll receive the policy within the mail within the next five to seven business days. Um, once you receive that policy, um, I'm going to follow up a second appointment with you. You know, we'll go over it, make sure you got it in the mail. We'll review it together. If anything doesn't look right or something's not spelled correctly, you know, we'll make the changes, right? I'm not perfect. So it's everything's will be good. And then what they do as a courtesy is they set this up automatic payments. You pick the day of the month that's comfortable for you. Most of my veterans that I do get qualified, they either pick the first, the third, or the second, third, fourth Wednesday of every month. Whatever day is most comfortable for you, we want to make sure at least it's comfortable every single month when you make this. <clears throat> Did you have any questions on that? I uh, know that makes sense. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Any questions on it? So that's kind of how I roll into it. Once they say no, I would say like, oh, no. I said, okay, sounds pretty simple, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, yeah, pretty simple. I said, okay, so it only takes about five, 10 minutes. What's a good mailing address for you? And then I kind of just roll into it. You know? I love that. That was honestly probably like the best like introduction. And I'm not just saying this because you're on the call. Like that was probably one of the, the best introductions I've heard ever for telesales. So like you crushed it because you went through what you're going to go through from top all the way to bottom. Yeah. You made it nice. You made it simple. Um, now, Gary, when you get those couple people that are like, oh, yeah, you know, Gary, I, I, I'm i I'm heading out the door right now or they're in the car or what, they're yeah. not in a place that you can do business. How do you yeah. handle that? So a lot of times, too, um, if they're in the car and stuff, I say, it sounds like you're driving. They're like, yeah, I'm driving. I was like, you can tell them. It's like, yeah, it sounds like you're in the car. I said, I don't want you. I don't want to do this when you're driving. Obviously, you want to do it when you're safe. Uh, they'll I'll be like, oh, where are you off to a doctor appointment? Are you going to movies? What do you, you know, where are you going? And they'll be like, oh, well, I just got to run to the store. I'm going to be home in like an hour. I said, okay, I'm going to give you a shout in an hour. I'm going to put you in my calendar right now, probably like hour, hour and a half, because I do have a bunch of appointments coming up just in case I'm a little late, but just look for my call, you know, within the next either 4.30, between 4.35, I'll give you a shout back. Okay. Like, yeah, that sounds great. And then we'll go over and get you qualified. Right. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. And then if people no show you, you simply just follow up on the no show. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I'll usually call them back. Um, I got the line that we use for like the leads and stuff that come in. And then I also have my personal phone number too. So if for some reason it gets blocked, 
or they're like, you know what, I don't want to deal. I'll just call from my other line. Hey, this is my direct line and yes. kind of go from there. So, yeah, which is a major key right there, guys. It's like if you're dialing from just one phone number, like it's going to become a problem. Like you, you need, you're going to yeah. need another phone number. Like, so whether it's an app or anything you download, but I love that Gary and you keep it like nice, simple. I can't wait to listen back to that and like rewrite it because that was straight fire, that introduction. Um, and you mm -hmm. just went from top to bottom and I can see why at the end of the day, it's like, if I agree to what you just said, and then you ask me like, does that make sense? Or do you have any questions about it? It's like, you're making sure I have full clarity. So you can tell as the person trying to communicate with me, if I'm actually on the same page as you, or if I'm just yeah. saying, yeah, Gary, yep, yeah, sure, okay, yeah. Like if I'm just yesing you to death and not listening, right? Um, so yeah. I love that. That's actually, that just eliminated all the objections and just made me rethink how I should probably start my final expense and a lot of mine, so. <laughs> I do it, I do it that way too, because it's like this way, I go over, I'm gonna talk to you about social, I talk about automatic payments that they know I'm gonna ask for banking, so then when I get to those points, I'm not really getting any objections. Like you do, some people are like, oh, well, I don't feel comfortable. I said, yeah, no worries. I honestly personally wouldn't know what to do with that social security anyways, right? So, you know, this is all secured stuff. You know, I've been doing this for three, four years. No one's ever complained about having a social problem, right? So you try to eliminate a lot of those objections where like, you're kind of like, hey, this is, this is what it's going to be up front. Make sure you're not blindsided once we get to that point. And then it's just smooth from there. So love that. Absolutely love that. That that was amazing. And guys, if you can we just like in the home, we always talked about proactive, reactive. And it seems like you have that same approach, Gary. You're very proactive versus being reactive at the end. You know, mm -hmm. in the first five, 10 minutes that that person is probably gonna be, you know, you're gonna be helping them or you're not gonna be helping them. Would that be yeah. fair to say? Oh yeah, definitely. It eliminates, it makes your phone calls getting like spending 20 minutes and then the guy doesn't want to give you a social to like, Hey, five minutes on the phone. I'm going to know if I'm going to go farther with this guy or not, you know?